Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video it's a bit more of a discussion piece as well as a bit of a demonstration on how I personally would tell someone and uh, have a discussion with someone on how they could get started with self-hosting. Now the intention with this video is it's almost like a video to help accommodate the other videos that I produce on my channel where I talk about how you can you know self-host specific services but I don't really tell you how you can be in the position to follow those videos to self host them yourself right so that's what this video is for ideally this video is going to guide you through first understanding how you can get started with self-hosting and then how you can get you know docker set up uh and now it's pretty straightforward from that point on but I, what i really want to suggest at the start is just the the initial things to understand coming into self-hosting now i'm a firm believer when it comes to hardware and self-hosting you use what you have and if you don't have anything that you don't need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on self-hosting gear i like getting by with just what i can right i don't want to spend a huge amount of money i want something that's efficient uh cost effective and will last me a long period of time so in this area i have a few suggestions the first one top of my list 100 percent every time someone asks the hardware they get started with learning to self-host a raspberry pi every time the raspberry top pies they are such an awesome single board computer the raspberry 5 has just come out and that thing just looks like a beast these are awesome i've i still use one today uh, even though i have this here now uh, which i run a lot of my self-hosting on raspberry pi will get you through your entry levels of learning to self-host learning linux getting comfortable with the command line this is what I would suggest if you can get them, right? I think you can get them for like under a hundred bucks. Uh, they are awesome. So that's my top one. Now, if you can't get a Raspberry Pi for whatever reason, another thing I would suggest, an old laptop. You can get these anywhere. Honestly, eBay, trade me if you're in, if you're in New Zealand, Facebook Marketplace, the recycling center. The idea is as long as I'm not too old, right? Like within, I would say within even 10 years, you can get something um, that you could maybe chuck a bit more RAM into and, you know, and install Linux on it because Linux is so lightweight and I'll touch uh, base on that in a second and away you go. So just to add a little bit of history, this is a laptop that I had when I was a student at um when i was studying for my degree and i was at a hospital contracting for them in my spare time while still studying to earn some money and they were throwing these out and i said oh man i'll i'll take one of those and that's what this is it's like an acer uh travel mate <laughs> and i installed linux on this thing it still has linux on it today and it's such a cool little machine and it's great for learning the self host you can make it so when you close the lid it doesn't power off so it makes a cool little lightweight server and yes it can be a server <laughs> like the, the definition of server you know it, it can be whatever you want so i could plug in a um an external drive for more storage i could make it a tiny nas there's so many opportunities right don't get stuck in analysis paralysis paralysis analysis paralysis right what a lot of people do when i hear them looking at getting into self hosting is that they sit there and they read documentation read on what they should buy and they just sit and plan for weeks and weeks and months and then they just never get around to it just get something right anything and number three if you already kind of have like a decent uh you know gaming rig or you have a MacBook or a laptop that has a def de decent amount of RAM and CPU and all of that, make a virtual machine and use Linux. Which brings me to the second part of this. Operating systems, right? When you're self-hosting, what operating systems are we going to look at? Now, I'm not going to recommend anything else except Linux. I don't care what Linux distribution you use, just use Linux. And there's a couple of reasons for this, is that generally Linux will work perfectly on a raspberry pi on older hardware like that laptop i showed you before and a lot of linux is just very accommodating to running a lot of self-hosted solutions and a lot of people when they're making self-hosted services that linux is a, essentially a first class citizen when it comes to that they it just works and you don't have to worry about windows and the the, the bloat that comes alongside of it and um the other thing with that is that you want this to run 
24 7 essentially right you want this thing to be on because if you're self-hosting services you want to be able to access them all the time so that's why linux lightweight something like a raspberry pi or a a laptop or whatever you can leave running for a good period of time linux all the way mac os again you want it to be like a dedicated thing mac os isn't really a dedicated operating system for running like server services and stuff like that right it's i use a mac and then i connect to my services to make the changes i need to do you know but i don't host anything on this that's just my view though Right. Uh, again, like I said, there's going to be a lot of bias opinion in this, uh, but that's just how it is. So those are my suggestions. Linux, the hardware choices, it's pretty much up to you as long as you can run Linux. Um, so let's jump into, I have a Linux Mint virtual machine. We're going to jump onto that and we're going to install uh, Docker and I'm going to show you how you can pretty much install Docker and run a container. And from that point on, you'll be good to follow any of my videos. So what you're seeing here, this is my little uh, virtual machine that I have running that's running Linux Mint and it has the terminal on the right hand side and it has Firefox open on the left hand side which has the install guide for installing Docker Engine. Okay, and a link to this will be in the description if you're keen on following it. But again, I think what I'm really trying to show here is just the idea on how simple this is. Okay, so once you've got Linux Mint installed or any Linux distribution that you want to use, you can scroll down here it's going to be a little laggy because it's in a virtual machine, so just a little apologies for that. But we come down here and there's a whole bunch of methods that we can use. And let me just quickly explain these methods if I can actually get this to work. So the first one is Docker Engine comes bundled with Docker Desktop for Linux, right? So they say this is the easiest way to get started. And it is. It's a GUI application that you can access your containers uh, and manage them and stuff like that to a certain degree. And yes, it's a great way, but it uses a fair bit of resources, right? And personally, it's it's if you're running lightweight machines, right, and you don't want a lot of stuff on them, I don't recommend Docker Desktop, okay? Regardless if it's Windows or Mac or whatever. If you can run it some other way, like via the command line or uh, Mac OS has this thing called Orb, I just try to avoid Docker Desktop if I can. The second option is to set up and install Docker Engine from Docker's app repository, and that's the way we're going to do this. I'll show you that in a second. You can install it manually, so you can just download the packages and install them, or you can use a convenience script. Now, as it says there, this is only recommended for testing and development environments, so I never really use this at all unless you're trying to get up and running quickly. Um, but this one here, I've never gone wrong with just installing it via an app repository is how I always do it. And that's, yeah, it's always worked well. So let's go to this section. So now this is where you have to be comfortable with the command line, just a little bit, right? You're opening it up. Here's the command line on the right. I've just opened it up and you just need to run these commands. Now, ideally when you run commands from a website, one, you should trust the website always Two, have some idea of what the commands are doing right just just to a certain point and if you're still not 100% aware generally the documentation here will explain the commands for you uh, or you can just look into them before running it but again don't get stuck in that analysis paralysis if we're just testing here you can be and you know it's an official website you can be fairly confident that you can trust what's happening here but if you're, again, if you're concerned, chuck it in chat GPT and let chat GPT explain it to you. <laughs> Trust me, it does a pretty good job at that. So what we're doing here is we just need to add the official GPG key here, which um, says, you know, this repository is who it is. So we're just downloading the, the keys that are provided. And then we're setting up the app repository. I've already done this section here, uh, but... Yeah, all we're doing here is allowing the adding the repository so we can download Docker. And if we scroll down just a little bit, you can see it gives us a command for installing Docker. So if I come into my terminal and hit paste, we can see some things that we're installing. So the key ones out of here that I want to explain is we're installing Docker. So Docker CE is community edition. But the other part of Docker that's the, something I want to explain is the Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is, if you've watched any of my other videos, is 
where I'm able to create that docker compose.yaml file, paste the build instructions in there, and that's how I can do docker compose up hyphen D and stuff like that. That's the part of Docker that I use a lot and a lot of people use. So make sure you're installing Docker Compose, right? And we all we want all the other services as well. And all we have to do to install this is hit enter and put our password in. Hit enter. And of course I get my password wrong. And it's saying, hey, do you want to install this? And again, the terminal, yes, we're using the terminal. And if, if it's new to you, all we have to do is just read and don't worry if you break things. We're, we're learning here, right? Make sure you're setting up a learning environment that if you do break it, oh well. So it says here, do you want to continue? The capitalized letter is the default, so we can just hit enter, which means it will be yes. And now it's downloading Docker for us. So we just sit back and we'll let it do its thing. Now, while that's installing, I just wanted to have a couple of things. Uh, I have a Discord channel that I'm kind of setting up that if you're keen to talk about anything that's being discussed in these videos, come join us. Um, there's only a couple of us in there at the moment, but again, uh, feel free to come in there if you've got any questions. Um, members of my channel, of my YouTube channel, which is the monthly paid uh, subscription, uh, you'll get one-on-one -on -one support with me as well. So if you've got any questions that you need uh, help with or if any of the videos you're following, uh, members get one-on-one -on -one support with me. So I just wanted to add that there. Anyway, we can see Docker has now been installed. So if we just follow the instructions on the left here, it says we can run the sudo docker run hello world. And this is actually a container. And if I just clear this terminal up a bit as well, this will create a container. And if this is your first time using Docker, this will be your first container. So we can click the copy button on the right hand side and we can paste. And this is going to create a hello world Docker container. And this is our way to pretty much validate and verify that our Docker installation works. So let's hit enter. And it's going to pull that hello world Docker image. Now hello world is a image that you use for testing and verifying and that's provided to you by Docker. And you can see here that this worked. So hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. So if you've followed me um, up until this point and you've got into here, you can now follow every video that I make. That's how straightforward it is. With Linux, you've installed Docker via the command line and now you're, you're good to go. That, that's it. There is no more to it. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Now you can make it more complicated as you go on and learn, but that's it. So if you break something, you only need to repeat those steps again to get back to having Docker and, you know, playing around and installing Linux have, and just having fun and learning, right? That does, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than this. Now, just to show you again, just how quickly and easy it is to create a container and actually have a service running, let's create a Nginx website, right? It would just be a basic front uh, HTML page, but oh well, let's have a bit of fun. So let's just do sudo docker run hyphen p, which is port 8080, and we'll be running Nginx and hit enter. There we go, so that's running now. So what we can do is come to our web page localhost and we'll put HTTPS on the front. Oh, sorry, it'll just be HTTP. Enter. We've hit our Nginx website. You're now self-hosting a website. <laughs> so this is just what I'm getting at. It's so quick and easy playing around with containers, right? You can start things up, shut them down and just get a feel for things and play and break. And that's the whole point that I have. And if you're curious, I actually have a blog post on this. So if we go to my website really quick, just a subtle plug, this one here, a link to this will be in the description of the video. Just break stuff. This I have a big saying on this where if you're wanting to learn, don't get stuck in the documentation loop, just get in and play with things and break things. Um, you can read more of this, it'll be in my uh, description of this video. But yeah, that's the video. Uh, a lot of talking and the demonstration was very quick, but that is how it is. Once you've decided on your hardware, you're using Linux, you follow the command line installation for Docker, you're away laughing, okay? And then the rest you learn and you kind of adapt as you find out what works for you and what doesn't. And next minute, you know, you're running a whole bunch of uh, services yourself. So. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know that there's probably a lot of discussion to be had around this. So either 
uh, comment in the YouTube comments below, join the Discord, have a conversation with me in there. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support lately. It's been amazing. And uh, yeah, for now, uh, it's goodbye, but I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.